thank you to Shani for this invitation to speak with you about this difficult Strauss-Kahn affair. Before I begin, I just want to apologize for my bad English. I hope you will understand what I am trying to tell. Um, you know, we, we proved recently that uh, it is a good thing for French people to have a silent uh, movie, but we don't, uh, we don't have yet a silent conferences, and it's, uh, it's a problem for us. So, um, about this Strauss-Kahn affair, you know, um, this, under this uh, term, the Strauss-Kahn affair, we have, in fact, three different affairs. The one you, everybody knows here is the affair with uh, Nafisa Kudiano in Manhattan. And as far as you are all supposed to know everything about that, I will not speak about it. And we have, uh, we, we, just to have some more, more um, time for the, the, the two others. The, the second um, began when uh, Sosan came back after the dismissal of the charges, came back to France. Uh, it is the Tristan Banon affair, the French uh, young writer, who claimed that a politician tried to rape her uh, years ago, eight years ago, um, during an interview she made uh, of him for a book. Uh, the mother, her mother, um, um, is uh, responsible in, of the Socialist Party. And she confirmed that she had been informed by uh, Christian Ballon immediately after uh, the fact uh, that uh, what happened, but uh, she um, persuaded uh, her daughter uh, not to lodge any complaint, thinking at that time that the personal cost um, for Tristan would be higher than the moral benefit uh, she could hope. Ballon first made her allegation public on television, on French television in uh, um, 2007, but only brought uh, them uh, to magistrate last July, uh, just when the Sophie Ten uh, affair uh, was about to collapse. In October, uh, the French prosecutors organized a face-to-face -face confrontation between Tristan Bannon and uh, Strauss-Kahn. And after that, they declared that they had prima facie evidence that a sexual assault took place, but the case was too old to prosecute. So they dropped the case. In French law, sexual assault has a shorter status of limitation, three years, uh, rather than attempted rape when you have 10 years. Under French law, Tristan Vanon could still have taken a complaint directly to judges and demanded that they review the evidence, but she decided finally not to do that. And she said, quite clearly, in the letter that the prosecutor sent me, she said, he says that there was a sexual assault, so my status as a victim is at least recognized. I will comment that. With, with the, the third case, the third affair in the affair, is the Carlton affair, from the name of a four-star hotel in the northern city of Lille, where a prostitution ring was discovered recently. The name of Soskal appeared in an investigation which began one year ago, but um, um, was published but by the French newspaper um, only in last October. Uh, Soskal was accused of having taken part in activities related to prostitution in different cities uh, in France, in Belgium, in Spain, and is here in Washington, and just two days before the, uh, the, the, the affair in, the, in Manhattan. And in all these uh, cities, um, two businessmen 
segue o hoje, onde hoje, 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 o Pontis, eu não me lembro. In uh, 2010 and 2011, a lawyer for Soskal confirmed recently he had attended the events, but say uh, his client would not have been aware if the women were prostitutes. Uh, Soskal is now scheduled to appear before a judge in uh, March the 20, uh, 28th. And even if in France you know that prostitution is not illegal, it is said uh, in the newspapers that uh, Soskar will probably be charged of uh, complicity or uh, proximity of uh, proximity. Complicity of proximity. Proximity is. Pimping. 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 Complicity of <laughs> and misuse of corporate assets. Recettes d'abus de biens sociaux. If it is, it is proved that he knew that these forgeries were paid by companies. With such an accumulation of affairs in the affair, it is easy to understand that the social situation in France is now completely different and far worse than it was not only uh, 10 months ago, before he was arrested, uh, but even six months ago, when he came back to France at the beginning of September. At that time, he hoped to rebuild his reputation, and even his, if for him it was too late for the IMF, or too late for any role in the French presidential campaign, he looked like a man ready to a new departure, trying to take some advantage of the dismissal of the charges. And this did not happen. The Carlton case has had an enormous impact, not only on uh, Strauss-Kahn reputation, but also on the attitude of French people towards him and towards the Soskat affair as a whole. After the time of sideration, the time of superstitions, came the time for separation. French people did not accept anymore to be implied in any way in another scandal, even as commentators. Don't speak to me about this guy anymore. Is since November the sentence you were the most as far as he is concerned. So at the time we speak, the situation for Soskan is bad in many ways. And his future is very dark. The media uh, show now an amount of disrespect proportional to the past the respect for a very important man. And the most uh, growing expression of this disrespect is, you can imagine how many laughings, sketches, lazies, um, imitations, etc. you have in any, any part of the country, used as a way for pushing down a man who was, was powerful. It's not necessary to say I don't have it. This short summary is very simplified um, uh, for a very complex story, but it's enough for me to introduce what, in my opinion, is the very difficulty of this affair. It is not only a criminal dispute, dis highly disputed cases, case of, where the question is what happened during the famous nine minutes when Nafisa Diallo and Soskan were alone in the 2026 street in the, novel, in the Sophie Day. These nine minutes, whatever will be said about that in the future, because we have now a civil um, process, a civil procedure, um, these nine minutes are already a part 
of Renato's story, the one of the fall of a man from the top to the bottom. In this fall, uh, Strauss-Kahn appeared to be quite different in his life than the man the people thought he was. And when I say that, I don't only, I'm not thinking about the ordinary French people, but even I, I am thinking about these very special um, persons who are in the to Paris, this little world of politicians, journalists, etc., who um, this so-called elite, who used to share a certain silence about DSK behaviors towards women. Um, in such a context, in a context, my opinion is that all this affair offers a double scene, how to say, double scene uh, structure. As you say, um, a box has a double bottom. When we thought that one typical scene uh, was at the center of a problem, a concentration, concentration of questions, not only for the protagonist but for society, we promptly discovered that behind that scene were another one. In the less bright light, and that the real point was in this other scene or between, in the trouble between the two scenes. I will develop this, this double scene approach for three questions, which I think are the most uh, uh, disputed among French people as far as gender issues are concerned. The question of presumption of innocence for the defendant, the question of presumption of veracity for, uh, for her, for the um, com com complainant, and the question of the rapport between seduction and consent in French culture and feminism. Mm -hmm. First, the, the, the question of the presumption of innocence. During the first week after Soskan was arrested, it is difficult from here to imagine the, the degree of incredulity, emotion, sideration among French people. We could not believe our eyes or our ears. We all seemed to be like uh, a nightmare. And a scene concentrated all these feelings and was able to turn them in a wide indignation and protestation against America. It was the per purple, 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 oh, purple, 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 Wow. <laughs> <laughs> organized, as you remember, in May the 15th. For French people, this work was not only deeply humiliating, but considered a terrible attempt to, for presumption of innocence. I, I, I can give, if you are interested, detail about the French law about that. In French law, it is strictly forbidden to present publicly somebody as a convicted when he is not, uh, not yet. Um, though this uh, court work created um, unanimity and a certain confusion at the same time. Many people protested vehemently. You cannot find any French people who agree with that. So, among the protestation, you have at the same time um, people saying it was a scandal because uh, Soskan was innocent, actually innocent, like for example Bernard or Hidevi. Like others say it was a scandal because Soskan must be presumed innocent. Robert Badalter was uh, the, the most influent of uh, this position. But rapidly, 
we discovered that beyond the scene of the artwork, there was in fact another scene, much more problematic for French people, the scene of the arrest itself in GFK airport of a very powerful, powerful man considered likely to be the next president of France and because of the accusation of a poor black Guinean housekeeper. This scene, contrary of the president, was not seen by anybody. We don't have any image of that scene. But it seems like the, in, the, in the imagination, the, the thing grows as à la mesure de uh, this lack of image. Um, and finally, we discovered it was not possible for French people to escape the difficult question. Would that have been possible in France? Of course, in the, in the French law, it was possible. But with French attitude toward powerful persons, specifically in the political field. And as far as in France, the, what we call the substitute du procureur, the prosecutor, is not independent. Many people thought that probably such an affair would have been covered up. Um, either by the direction of the hotel or by the, the judges themselves if it, take, it took place in Paris. These questions uh, were difficult to, to discuss when uh, Soskal was in Ricker, at Rickers Island. The first voices trying to speak about that were the ones of feminists considering shocking that the French elite, elite okay, mm -hmm. uh, was so preoccupied with presumption of innocence and not at all with the alleged victim, perhaps we, who perhaps had to be trusted. It was the first gender issue among the French people. And, um, when some journalists seem to justify the hypothesis of a non Strauss-Kahn affair, like Jean-François Kahn, who's speaking about um, un troustage de domestique, a quickie with a domestic, something like that. The troussage is an old fashioned word, from, directly from the past. Um, I was among those who could not accept that um, the, that kind of uh, affirmation and this the, this kind of protestation against the arrest itself of a powerful man because of the complaint of an housekeeper. So I published a paper in Le Monde website in, entitled La Femme de Chambre et le Financier, protesting against a certain use of the argument of presumption of innocence, saying that our politicians seem to ignore that if we don't want this argument to be used to justify male uh, impunity, we must accept a new equilibrium, a new balance between presumption of innocence and presumption of veracity. I will explain uh, what is presumption of veracity, but before, um, let's uh, go on with presumption of innocence for the defendant. For some people, the purple was not only a very bad practice, it was the proof of an, an, a symptom of the reality of the American adversarial system compared to the very good French inquisitorial <laughs> system. <laughs> and Elisabeth Guigou, uh, an ex-Ministry of Justice, was one of the most combative on, about that. She said in French television, 
the images of artwork were of an indescriptible cruelty. I am happy we don't have the same judicial system. In the American adversarial system, the prosecutor gathers only elements a charge, elements for the prosecution. When in France, our juge d'instruction investigates the case both for the prosecution and for the defense. And she adds that the French inquisitorial system perhaps takes more time but is much more it's a, good, a protection for fundamental rights of the persons. And here began a very important controversy, but among specialists of law, lawyers, um, with um, some people, some lawyers, trying to explain to French people who don't know anything about uh, the American adversarial system uh, what was in fact, the very um, the fact that this system, excuse me, this system, this American system, is in fact very protective of the presumption of innocence. And during the, the case, the French people they had this the leçon. But we we were uh, we tried to understand this uh, system. And we discovered all these uh, aspects of the incredible um, protection of presumption of innocence, which uh, the judges consider, the judge, the judge consider an arbitrator between a uh, prosecutor and uh, the defense. The, the, the rule of the due process, um, the unanimity of the 12 jury, the uh, conviction beyond all reasonable doubt, etc. But, you know, at the beginning, uh, with so, so much pa passionate people, with about 47% of French people believing all that was a conspiracy, um, the, the voice of these lawyers uh, was not listened to. And for me, it was extraordinary to see uh, this uh, movement against the adversarial system when I remember that in recent years we have had in France a very important, very shocking affair named l'affaire d'Outreau, the name of a place in the north of France, uh, an affair of alleged pedophilia and rape for, of many children, uh, not among the powerful people, among poor people, um, an affair where many people were falsely accused and women remained for years in prison before the audience. And um, it was an incredible scandal in France uh, um, uh, about the, 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 the French justice itself. And in an excellent little book, analyzing the Outreau case. It's named The New uh, Salem Witches, like that, mm -hmm. by uh, two judges, Antoine Garapon and Denis Salas, explain just how uh, the French inquisitorial system, with the secrecy uh, of the investigation, with this judge alone, in the elaboration of what's, what the, the one narrative, because there is only one truth, you must give one narrative with no um, discussion. Um, this they explain how uh, this system uh, gives a very difficult option for any change. If when you are in the direction, you can't go, go uh, elsewhere. Neither for the church or for the, uh, even the ch children who accused, and um, all that revealed to be extremely problematic in the concept of sexual crimes, and especially children rapes, where emotion was so high that many people want to have convicted 
person before any uh, audience. So how did uh, we finish with this uh, discussion about presumption of innocence? I would say very rapidly that uh, what is important is when uh, happened the dismissal of charges um, in August because of the lack of credibility of Nafisa um, the, the, the person who, who at the beginning, the politicians or journalists who at the beginning uh, had protested against um, the, 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 the American system, we did not hear them anymore. <laughs> and there is two reasons, I think. The first one um, is that, in a way, the feminist point of view very rapidly became dominant. Um, and I can, um, I, I experienced myself that. Uh, this, between the first week, and it, it takes only one week or, or ten, 10 days to uh, have a, a complete reversal. And my hypothesis, for example, was what, what widely uh, accepted. I was invited, that I was never like that, in French television, radio, everywhere. <laughs> so we cannot, it is important uh, um, to, um, um, to, to registrate, uh, not for me, but for the, the, the feminists in general, this success, because it is significant of something important. What was revealed by the Soskan affair was not um, this old country with this old machism, etc., uh, what was pretending. Uh, what was revealed was a gap between a, a changing society and uh, the behaviors and analysis of this little world of the politicians and the journalists, and specifically the old generation. My <laughs> so um, another, um, another lesson is uh, French people were impressed, very impressed, but by the capacity of the American system to, uh, after, and, and for the prosecutor, for Cyrus Vance, after having done such a an important arrest of such an important person, to, to come back, to change. In France, we never come back. <laughs> it's that problem. It, it is one of the main reasons of um, um, you say, um, erreur judiciaire um, about the uh, uh, and false allegation, etc. The report by Samuel Vance was widely discussed and considered, in a way, a model of pedagogy compared to French secrecy, when the judges never explained anything. This report was translated. Many people read it carefully from the beginning to the end. And finally, uh, we accepted to receive, receive a lesson from America. And the lesson was that many people in France are now ready to understand that there is no contradiction between um, respecting the rights of the complainant of uh, presumption of veracity and respecting the rights for the accused. The question, in a gender perspective, is, I think, for French people to acquire a new culture. A new culture, especially if for this he said, she said <laughs> cases. Uh, we, we don't have the bons outils, tools, for that. For example, we don't have the good culture for in the rapidity of investigation. We all don't have the good culture about uh, sincerity, 
You cannot imagine how many people in France told you, you know, in America, you cannot lie. I said, in France, you can. <laughs> <laughs> but it's serious. If we do want to give credit, some credit to uh, the, com the, the, the women who, uh, who say they have been raped, you must have a high level of exigence of the, about the responsibility, of course. And now um, let's go to the second point. This the rights of the compl com complain complainant. 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 And the presumption, what I called the presumption of uh, veracity. What is presumption of veracity? Uh, I, I invent that. So, be careful. And I define it as the right for the complainant not to be considered a liar before it is proved a lie was done. When I first uh, proposed this presumption of veracity, uh, I got at the same time, at, at the same time, a wide approval. And as many feminists who criticized the attitude of our friend politicians, but at the same time, I had a lot of critics from um, the lawyers. Many told me uh, this was a stupid con uh, concept or even a nonsense concept, because, I quote, you cannot say one thing and the contrary. And for them, it was not possible not to have, at the same time, presumption of innocence and presumption of veracity. So let's um, take a few minutes to answer um, this criticism at two levels. Uh, the level of the French attitudes uh, towards the voice of uh, the complainants um, and um, the level of the law itself. And here also, what is striking for me is the changing society and the gap between that and the consciousness among the politicians or intellectuals. So, um, the two scenes structure, the double scene structure. It is especially in the Tristan Bannon affair that the question of presumption of veracity appeared in um, all its aspects. And once again, we add this double scene uh, structure. The, the first one, the first scene, which uh, con concentrated all the attention and all the commentaries was uh, the moment when, after he came back to France, strauss appeared for the first time on French television on September the 18th. 13 million people watch this um, moment. It's uh, important for a little country as, as France. Um, because they know it was the first time uh, Strauss-Kahn was speaking um, be, since he was arrested. He was speaking publicly. Uh, what uh, about this um, uh, emis emission? Broadcast. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, um, everybody know, um, discovered that this moment has been managed as an incredible demonstration of power. Not only um, of power that you can have the TV you want, you can have the moment you want, you can have the minutes you want, 20 minutes. Even a French president don't have 20 <laughs> minutes in the journal television. And um, not and during the broadcast, it appears that all the questions were prepared, all the answers were prepared. What they say, the movement of the hands, the movement of the eyes, everything was prepared. And when all that was finished, the journalist 
who was a friend of him, right. uh, um, began to ask questions about economy. Just <laughs> as if he was a new expert and the, what the parenthesis was closed. <laughs> During this broadcast, uh, Strauss-Kahn used many times the report of Simon Thomas. He had the report in the end and showed the report to the, to the people, to the camera. And I think it was the main error he committed. At one moment, he said, I quote, nothing but consensual happened in that room. It is not me who say that, but the prosecutor himself. And showing, you must read the report of the prosecutor. I think that at that moment, Soskan lost all the advantages he could have because of the, dis the dismissal of the charges. You know, many people uh, knew precisely what was written in this report. They knew that there was nothing like that. So, in, at that moment, before all the French people, Swosskamp not only showed uh, disrespect uh, for, the, for the report, for the compl complainant, but for the truth, and even for the French people. He acted like in the old times, in front of French people. He, he did not understand how fast history was <coughs> running since he has been arrested. And um, to understand this incredible error he made, you must look to an, at another scene, another one, far less brilliant and uh, expected, a scene which took place the day after. In this scene, you see that what DSK Soskan did not, while he was in the USA, did not understand is how French people have changed in a few months about the presumption of veracity. Tristan Bano was invited um, the, the day after in another television, but was also all this part of the <coughs> affair, the rivalry between them. To explain her own affair and uh, why she did not complain of the past at the beginning, why after she decided. The affair at that time was not finished. And it is incredible to look, everybody can look at that on in the internet. Huh? Uh, this the scene is just, in any old points, the contrary of the one that took place the day before. Tristan Bano, surrounded with the four journalists, a uh, lawyer, um, Daniel Kohnman, it's, it's a, a French and uh, German politician. <coughs> uh, they have a discussion about, um, about all that. Um, and in, the, in, the, in this discussion, uh, they demonstrate um, what happened when a woman is only listened to and not considered a, as a liar, as Tristan Bano had been for years. They discussed, um, they, they don't try um, to, to give the good answer. They say, it was very clever. In this case, he said, she said, it is difficult. The problem of the proof is difficult, etc. But what is important is that Bano was able, with the help of our lawyers and the journalists, to not to treat only her case without any context, as Roskan has done before. She was a sociologist of his own case. She speaks for women in France. 
she speak for the thousands of women who are raped, who don't um, port a plant, don't have a complaint, etc. And she was able, and it was very important, for the, the, the French people understand that the attitude toward, towards uh, women in this kind of affair is very different from their attitude toward children. Um, the children, we trust them when they, and, and very often too much. <laughs> and it is a problem. But there is nothing like that for the women. And at the moment, it was for the first time possible to, to make the distinction. Um, the day before, Strauss-Kahn, during his, his interview, said, uh, at, at the moment, he had to, to speak about the Tristan Banon case. And as usual, he said that nothing but consensual happened between them. And that uh, all what she, she said was a lie. A lie. And that what she has done was a denunciation calomnieuse, a false accusation. And that il avait pas déposé plainte, he did complain in justice against her for that. And what is interesting there, for, especially for lawyers or for sociologists of law like me, is Soska seemed to not to know and even uh, his lawyers seem not, not, not to know that a very important change happened in French law just one year before, uh, uh, just on this question of um, denunciation calumnies, false accusation. What happened in the past? In the past, when a woman, a, a woman or a person, accused somebody of a rape, for example, and the charge were dismissed, it was possible for the, the defendant to, to return and to accuse her of denunciation calumnies. And, if, and automatically, the, the, the woman was considered and treated as a lie. And each a woman who go to the police or to the justice knew that. So it was a very important problem for French feminist association. And there was a case which a um, very long one. It was uh, 10, it, it's, it's sadly, it, ten, it lasted 10 years um, uh, about um, for a woman um, who was accused by the uh, your, your superior um, of that. And um, finally, um, the Cour Européenne des Droits de l'Homme uh, condemned France. So, uh, and it, it would be interesting to, um, to have a discussion even of, about uh, the detail of that because at the heart of the chain was a very interesting discussion about consent. Because when um, you are accused of having done a false denunciation, most of the time you must defend yourself against this accusation. You, you, you say you were de bonne foi. You were the victims. But, for the rape, you could not do that because, and, and for, because what make what is making a rape? It is the lack of consent. And so the judge considered the woman who, who, who suggests she has been rape, raped. She necessarily she knows what happens, and if she dies, she knows, etc. So because of that. It was automatic that if any man or person who um, has, um, um, who obtained a, the presumption of innocence 
and the facts were not proved. Could, after that, you know, um, consider she was alive. So I think it is a, the change is very important because um, and Emmanuel uh, Sada knows that because for years in the history this question that the fact a uh, woman it perhaps lied. Um, had consequences for all women. And I was myself very interested about, and, and for, for, for personal reasons, fami fa for my family reason, about um, the impossibility for French women for, um, from the revolution to uh, 1912 um, to, um, um, to seek for uh, paternity, reconnaissance de paternity. Because what was the, the reason, the, what was said that it was possible that it was uh, a lie. A man, a, a woman can say, you are the father of my child. So no, not any woman could do anything. And my own uh, grand grandmother was in that case as a domestic one. Um, having been, um, I don't know why, that he, he is at, um, attempting a child from his uh, boss. And this uh, the child was my grandmother. So, and um, what is in, um, it, for me it's an, an hazard, a very romantic hazard, is four days after um, the source gun was arrested. I had an appointment with an old cousin just to look together to the, pa pa the papers of our family and just perhaps to try to do something for the memory of this great grandma. So you can imagine how I felt, I felt when I heard about Troussard the domestic. And this leads me to the, 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 the last point, the third point, French culture, feminism, seduction and consent. The Sousskan affair did not raise discussion and dilemma only about the way we must act in front of an alleged crime, such as a rape or sexual assault. For French people, it was also an affair which obliged us to discuss our ordinary behavior. How do we treat sexuality in general, and especially sexuality in the political sphere, as far as political leaders are concerned? But the conditions for such an introspection were not very good. As you know, it was, you know, perhaps, I don't know, in the first day, after Soskan was arrested, when the French people were accusing the American man, um, an incredible amount of cliché stereotypes flew from America to uh, French people. And among them, the most surprising, shocking, were the cliché not about French men, but especially about French women. <laughs> it seems to me at least paradoxical that some people gave me or gave us lessons of feminism using one of the oldest reflex of machism. Look for the woman. Try to find the woman fault. And to explain that, I will use, in a, in a, finally, my two scenes, two double scene uh, uh, structure. The first scene about that problem appeared in the New York Times. Um, the New York Times, I love this uh, newspaper. I'm a subscriber. I pay for that. <laughs> uh, on May uh, the 18th, the New York Times website published a room for the debate. 
to perhaps remember, entitled, Are French Women More Tolerant? I quote, are, French, are women in France more forgiving of, much, um, of such misbehavior, whether it is reason, infidelity, or sexual harassment of co-workers, or is this an unfair stereotype? It is a, a false question. We were accused. And do you imagine the effect of uh, French feminists or French women like me, for example, at a moment where we were in such a conflictual situation with our own politicians to be accused of being, in a way, responsible <laughs> for the sexual assault or rape a famous French man I had never met had allegedly done on a hotel housekeeper <coughs> When we look at the 11th contribution of this room for debate, we find some of them specially concerned not to play this game of accusation stereotypes. And thank you for this video. But <coughs> among them, there was a surprise. And for me, it was a shock to discover that, for example, a very well-known and celebrated feminist and historian, John Scott, not to, to, to tell the name, used this opportunity to point her finger of French feminism in general, on another woman, historian in particular, Mona Ozouf, <coughs> accused, and is a historian of the French Revolution, of having, among other, prepared the way for rape, for sexual assault, with her analysis of French um, um, uh, culture, of seduction, civility and gallantry in the relationship between the sexes. It is not my problem here to discuss about uh, Mona Ozouf's work. I admire her a lot. But in any case, I, it was not acceptable to read that, that to read at that moment that for her, who has always been a feminist, Feminism was, I quote, a foreign import. import. Um, to discover, there's no argument, that for her, um, this foreign import was supposed to be contrary to French identity, something you perhaps in a way with your genes, <laughs> because Muslims could not learn that. Mona Ozouf never wrote one word about Muslim people. And if you know something about our problems and controversy in France about that now, that's a very problematic question. It is irresponsible to, to play with such a question. Can you consider? Everything is permitted. I felt myself entrenched. And at the same time, I was persuaded that this um, discussion, this accusation about seduction uh, and consent was not at all the good interpretation. Um, if the source can had a reputation, it was uh, not a all of um, on, the, on, on this question of uh, art of seduction or civility or anything one else of analyzed in a brilliant way in her books, quoting a lot of American literature. She's a specialist of Henry James, of uh, Edith Wharton, etc. So to answer to this, to this forum, uh, and to build uh, with my little hands um, an other scene, um, 
I decided to draw this as a scene as an anti-cliché one. Not to prove anything, but for two reasons. First, because we have a certain sense of dignity, a certain sense uh, of to be proud of ourselves. We cannot accept to be treated in any, any way, in, in, in such a way. So I try. I have a reflex of fierty. And I want to take the stigma, to, to take and the stigma and return it. So I give an, an other newspaper, Le Monde, he gave me a one page, and I, I titled um, the paper to finish with the stigma, un féminisme à la française, not French feminism, à la française, like you have in, uh, in uh, the old, with the, uh, a manner, à la française. In, in, uh, at the same time, I wanted to open a room, another room for the debate about seduction and consent. And I, I write very carefully just one sentence, which has been largely discussed uh, since. And I try to, to translate it in English. Feminism à la française is not dead. It is not only a way of thinking, but a way of feeling and living. The French women want equality in rights and the asymmetrical pleasures of seduction. They want the absolute respect of consent and the delicious surprise of stolen kisses. Of course, it was a condition. But for me, it was not only a provocation, especially with stolen pieces. It was a way of telling that for years there was a, some misunderstanding about seduction, and that we must absolutely distinguish between seduction as an art, as a sort of dramaturgy for civility a way of approaching another person, and above all, a way of interpreting all the signs this person gave to you, and try uh, to uh, not only to have the consent, but to be sure she consents. This, uh, this uh, seduction has nothing to do with seduction as a kind of duperie a kind of violence or harassment. And for that, the good word is not seduction, but hunting. hunting. And for the hunter, the consent of the animal is not a problem. <laughs> My paper was not understood. John Scott answered, accusing me of being engaged for TSK and opposed to the very presum the presumption of veracity I myself have, have elaborated. For the second time, everything was permitted. But let me end this conference with a different music. In fact, I did not give the inspirators of my formula, of my um, imagined the inspirators of this formula about asymmetrical pleasure of seduction, stolen kisses, were three men. I want to, def to defend women. I use the uh, inspiration from three men. Two were French, but one, and the, the main one was an American. The French were, were easy for French people to recognize. One is Charles Trenet, mm -hmm. who sang the beautiful song Baiser Volé. And the second one is Francois Truffaut, 
who use this song in the beautiful movie, basically. And do you see, the, you can seriously pretend that the stolen kisses has anything to do with sexual harassment. The other inspirator was the one who gave, I think, the best, one of the best description I ever read of this asymmetrical pleasure of seduction, when seduction is an art. It is an American writer I admire extraordinarily, very much. It's, you know him, Daniel Mandelson. And it was in this book uh, on gay relationships, The Elusive Embrace. I like very much uh, force this, uh, this, this book. And well, with um, a purity much more um, impressive than in, 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 the, in, 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 in heterosexual um, seductions, something is less apparent than between two men when you can see to, to, to look at, to be looked at, etc. All this place of um, asymmetrical movement towards um, the, the encounter. And um, I will not end uh, with a conclusion. It is too early to conclude. But having a chance of speaking to you, let me just say that my conviction is that feminism, like literature, is something we share among the ocean. If the TSK affair could persuade more people that a sexual predator, predator is somebody who had, well, not any kind of consideration from the game of seduction, it would be a progress. The game of seduction takes time. <laughs> and that's the reason and Mendelssohn, Mendelssohn showed that very well in his book, The Time for Experience, A Time for, for Sadness, A Time for Anxiety. It is long to think of. Then perhaps in nine minutes, there is another <laughs> uh, for such a